Good morning, everyone. Radiant ones, amen. We're going to put a praise, a sound of praise into our atmosphere today, amen. Amen. Come on. We've come to praise Jesus. I raise a hallelujah in the presence of my enemies. I raise. I raise a hallelujah.
Jesus. Come on, we're putting on the garment of praise this morning, amen? Come on! Woo!
surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by this you. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. Yeah. This is how I fight my battles. Don't move from there. Don't move from there. As we're declaring that song, this is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. Listen to me. The Lord was stirring in my heart this morning. And as I've been watching the news about what's happening in Israel, as we're declaring that right now, listen, in the natural, in the natural, it might look like missiles flying and they are out of control. It might look like every nation and every tongue rising up against Israel right now. But my Bible says that we have the victory. My Bible says Israel stands. My Bible says God is the Redeemer who sets free. And I'm just, I just had a picture right now and I'm seeing these missiles and I'm seeing things happen and I'm seeing this little, little, little place, this little, little place surrounded by enemies right now. But the powerful, mighty hand of God, the great of the heavens of earth, He's the one that surrounds Israel right now. Let, let me just say something. Iran thinks they're in control. Russia thinks they're in control. China thinks they're in control. Come on, let me just say something to you. America might be intimidated, but let me just say something to you right now. That the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob is about to show Himself strong. Come on, let me tell you something. We're in a defining moment, church. Let me say this to you. If you're watching by live stream, if you're here right now, if you're playing Christianity, if you're in a place right now where, oh, I didn't know if I want to go to church or not, let me just say this to you. We're in a moment right now that might define the coming back of the Lord Jesus Christ sooner than you think. We, we may not even finish the service today and He comes back. You, you may not even see Monday morning. So why are you worried about what's going to happen Monday? Why are you worried about what's going to happen Tuesday? Why are you worried about what's going to happen next month? Why are you worried about how you're going to get through the year? Listen, we may not get through the day. We're in that hour. Let me tell you something. Th this is a place that faith needs to rise. There needs to be a stirring, not a fear that rises. But there has to be an expectation and anticipation, a rising up of faith within us. Come on. Although my enemies encamp around me, but there is one that confuses the enemy and they turn on each other. Come on. God is going to swallow up every enemy that comes against Israel. How do I know that? My Bible predicts it. My Bible prophesies it. My Bible declares it. My Bible foretold in Ezekiel 37, 8, what's coming. We're, we're on the brink of that. We're on the whirlwind of that right now. You don't have to be a prophet, just read the Bible. Just read the Bible. The bottom line is, Israel wins. The bottom line is, we win. If we faint not. If we faint not. I want us to pray for a few moments. Can we pray for a few moments? And I want us to declare that song one more time. And it includes you. It includes every need you have. It includes every fear you have, every anxiety you have, every doubt you have, every worry you have. Father, we just thank you right now, Lord. 
We come before you, Jesus. We come before you, Father, as the ecclesia right now, the chosen ones, the church, Father, the called out ones, the set aside, a royal holy nation and priesthood right now. Father, we lift Israel up to you right now. That is the apple of your eye. I know if somebody messes with my boy, they pick a fight with me, not just my boy. And right now there's people that have picked a fight with the apple of your eye. And in actual fact, they've picked a fight with you. And I thank you right now for the strong, mighty hand. For Jehovah Gibber is the one that fights on our behalf. Jehovah Nissi is our banner of protection and Israel's banner of protection. And right now, Lord, I pray for the military. I pray for wisdom, discernment, Father. Lord, I thank you for supernatural spirit poured out upon them right now. Holy Spirit, that your spirit would pour upon every, every leader right now, the prime minister and every main decision maker, Father. And Lord, that they will not move by fear they're not moved by emotions but they move by your spirit I declare that right now because Zechariah says not by might not by power but by your spirit and we lift them up to you right now and I thank you Father for Israel I thank you right now for the battle is the Lord's and the victory is ours and I thank you right now Lord that although our enemies encamp around us although spiritual enemies encamp around us although physical enemies encamp around us Lord although all these things are rising up against the nations Father corruption in politics in governments Father but I thank you your word stands true and faithful to the end and right now we just declare come on just declare that one more time the enemies around us but there's one that fights for us come on declare that right now church this is how I fight my battles yeah. This is how I fight my battles oh. This is how I fight my battles Come on, it may look yeah. It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you It may look like I'm surrounded But I'm surrounded by you it may look
new song to Him. Just bring a melody. Bring your worship to Him. the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. Lord, we put our trust in you this morning. You are worthy of it all, Father. We give our gratitude and our praise and our honor and our glory and our worship and our offerings to you this morning. And we just say thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for giving us this beautiful life holy and godly and worthy, Father. We thank you, Father God, for our health, Lord. We give you praise. We thank you for our husbands, our wives, our children, our grandchildren, Lord, our families, Father. We are just so grateful for this beautiful church that you've given us to be able to come in safety, to be able to come and worship you in freedom, In freedom, God, we are just so grateful, Father. We give you all the honor. We give you all the glory and all the praises, Father. We do not forsake the gathering of the saints, Lord. You are here in the midst, Father. You are healing people right now in their seats, Father. There are family members online, family members in church that are wanting to touch the hem of your garments and saying, Jesus, I need divine health. I need divine healing. Right now, Father, I pray in their chair, at home, here in the auditorium, wherever they are, even Jordan on the drums, even Louise on the keyboard right now, we stretch our faith and we thank you for their healing, Father God. We thank you, God, there's people in this auditorium and online that are trusting for financial breakthroughs, Father. They are in desperate need, Father God. We thank you, Father God, that you said that you will meet every need according to your riches in glory in Christ Jesus. We call prosperity into the lives of our church members, into our families, Father God, into this nation, into the Gold Coast, Father. We do not accept recessions. We do not accept lack in this church, but we declare increase, Father God. We declare it, we believe it, and we receive from you today, Lord. And we thank you, Father God, that this is the day you have made. We will rejoice. We will rejoice and be glad to hell with the devil and in all of his negativity, all his negative reports, to hell with the devil. Church, I said to hell with the devil. God is on the throne. God is magnificent. God is more powerful. God is sovereign. He is good. He is great. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, I'm here to do announcements, church.
<laughs> not preach. <laughs> My amazing husband's getting up to do that. So you may be seated. I can't see you guys, but um, I just want to welcome any new visitors. If you are new this morning, please put up your hand. Any new people? All right, next week I'm stretching my faith. I can't see any hands, is there? That there are going to be at least 10 new people. I, I, I commission all of you on the chair. There's not going to be one empty chair in this auditorium because there's at least one person you will come across this week and invite to church. I last week invited one of my other neighbors. She said, oh, are you, what do you do? And I, I told her and she said, oh, which church? And uh, I invited them. So I'm really shy. So if I can do it, you can do it. Amen. So any, if there is anyone that was new and I missed you, you'll get a welcome pack. Welcome to our online community. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Um, we are grateful. We're blessed to have you with us. And uh, send us a text, send us a, a Facebook message, or send us an email if you are new to our church family. We'd love to connect with you, pray with you, and love on you. Amen. Um, there's also a QR code if you, would if you are new to scan and we've got an um, incredible church app to stay connected with. And um, if you haven't got the app, if you're coming to this church, please download the app. It's a way of communicating, keeping connected and seeing what's up and coming. Reading the amazing blog my husband writes every week. He puts a lot of time and effort into that. We got our newsletter that comes out every week. So subscribe. For our newsletter, you're going to love it and um, stay connected. We all, we're all we a family, right? We are a church community. We are a family and we like to know what's happening in each other's lives and the house of God. There's something exciting. My dad says, don't forget this announcement, Megan. I said, don't worry, I won't forget. We have got, do we have men in the house? Yeah, we've got amazing men in this house. Uh, we've got Next Friday, the 19th of April, 6.30 p.m. Every man, there's no excuse. It's only $10 and you get a two-course meal. It's probably going to be better than what your wife will cook at home. Trust me, I'm not the great cook, so I'm sure Pastor Sean will be here just for the food. Um, there is going to be sausage sizzle and there's a second course, which is fresh ocean king prawns on a roll or brisket on a roll excuse us they are setting the bar for the ladies um, i'm under pressure here for the ladies events so um please register at the info desk come on this is your opportunity to invite someone to church bring your your son bring your bring your neighbor bring your co-workers bring somebody that um, never would put foot in a church and they will love it i promise you what you just need is sow the seed and God will do the rest and water. It's not your responsibility, but it's your responsibility to sow the seed. I am really excited about the next announcements. Ladies, do we have ladies in the house? Woo! So we've got our girls' night out. This is the Friday the 10th of May. Um, we've, got, we've, we've got it for ages six years up. Um, why I said six is because this is an incredible age where they start really discovering life and fi figuring out who they are. And we are going to do an incredible evening of empowerment and pampering because we know ladies love pampering. And I'm going to be speaking on self-worth and self-image. And this is an important topic for ladies and for anybody, actually, anybody. So it's called Worthy. Um, we've got incredible things lined up. There's so many surprises. There's gifts. Um, so you can register. Registration opens today. Say, registration is open. So ways you can register. You can go to the info desk and you can scan the QR code and you can um, register online. The cost is really cheap, $15 for girls from 6 to 11. Uh, adults are $25 and we're going to have finger foods and we're going to have a real good time ladies so you don't want to miss out and this is your opportunity to bring somebody that is hurting somebody that is lonely this is a place to bring them into a family community of love bring those single moms that never get a chance to go out bring those daughters that don't come to church that are all from the Lord, and they're all going to get truly touched. Oh, yes, and I am the speaker, if you can see. Um, 
So, yeah, I'm excited. So I'd love to call my dad up to come do the offering. Oh, actually, sorry, Dad. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We have got, <laughs> oh, we've got baptism certificates before I forget. I'd like to call up, um, and if you can stay up, we want to grab a photo of you. Um, Luke Skinner, Caitlin Skinner, Holly Thompson. That one. Congratulate them, guys. They, they got baptized on Easter Sunday. It was beautiful to witness and watch. I'd love to call Shanae, um, Louise Solomon up and Daniel Carter. Amen. It was a beautiful experience and um, God is good. We love you guys. We're excited to see the next chapter unfold in your lives. Smile for a photo. There we go. Awesome. Bless you all. Hallelujah. The ladies are going to get pampered. I've got a couple of tradies with paint, with duct tape, rollers. We're pulling in, boys. We're going to decorate the girls. What do you say? Hey? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, anybody need any envelopes for the offerings? Uh, we have up on the screen now ways to give. Just put your hand up so that the ushers can see where you are, different methods and ways to give on, on screen right now, if you can uh, just pay attention to that and follow on, thank you, and while they're doing that, I love the Big Bang Theory, don't you guys, now I prefer young Sheldon, have you ever watched the Big Bang Theory when Sheldon's a kid? His mother is, a, is supposed to be a devout Christian. And she starts losing faith because things are going wrong. And so little Sheldon says to her, Mom, what on earth is wrong with you? He, she say, he says, do you understand that if the earth moves forward at one second too fast, we all frazzle? And he says, do you also understand if the earth goes backwards one second, we all freeze to death? And he says, what is wrong with this God that you serve? Don't you understand these methods? And then he says, let me tell you something, mom. Now you're talking about a 10-year-old. And he says, mom, there are millions of women on the face of the earth. And God chose you to have me. <laughs> this in itself is a miracle. She looks at Sheldon and she says, you know, your faith is incredible. So true. What a story, isn't that true? Eh? Your tithes and offerings are based upon faith. The scripture says, be it unto you as according to your faith. I think you need to think about that for a second. See, what happens is, what have you got in your hand that allows faith to operate in a supernatural dimension? The same God that created the universe that Sheldon was talking about puts everything in order in perfect harmony. Perfect. One of my pet uh, hobbies is to study quantum physics and quantum faith. I just love it. Watch what he says here in Mark 6 verses 34. When Jesus went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion on them because they were like sheep without a shepherd. Someone who wasn't telling them how to be directed on the planet. And he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place. We have a problem. Okay? And then he said, Send, Jesus said this to his disciples. Or rather, they said, to Jesus, forgive me. They said, send them, the people, away. It's not time. What shops are going to be open, for goodness sake? Do you agree with me? So the disciples still want to command the king of glories. You send them away. So Jesus says, what? Hold on a second. You feed them. Now, have a look what's in your hand. Have a look at the seed that's in your hand. 
So what's what Jesus says? He says, you feed them. And, and, and the disciples turned to him and said, we have nothing. Jesus said, no, you have something. Go find it. Five loaves, two fish. They come back with the five loaves and two fish. And Jesus looks at it and he says, let's pray over it. Let's break it. And let's give God the glory, our Father. Because I know you hear my prayers, Lord. So what they've done is they've taken the natural and they've placed it in the supernatural. What's the dollar? What is the tithe that you have in your hand to create an exponential, supernatural miracle. My question is, by what faith do you come to the Lord? Are you going to listen to man or are you going to listen to His words? What's the result? The result is 12 baskets after 5,000 people are fed. So He supplies a supernatural miracle, divides it up, Leftovers still to take home. I think I'd like to have a lunchbox like that. Hebrews 11 verses 3 and 4 says, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command, so that what is seen was not made out of the visible. It was made out of something not seen. What's in your tithe? No tithe, no seed. No tithe, no food. I'll leave that thought with you. Can we come and present our gifts and offerings and tithes in love, not in control, not in manipulation, not in persuasiveness, but under the inspiration of a supernatural God that will take one note and turn it into exponential growth? Father, we just thank you. We thank you, Holy Spirit. We command and commission this house to be paid for. We command and decree and declare millionaires, billionaires, quadrillionaires. There's no limit to God's favor and grace and mercy. And we thank you now, Holy Spirit. We thank you, Holy Spirit. Father, we pray over these offerings and these tithes, and we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Father, for the supernatural return. In Jesus' name, amen. Just close your eyes for a few moments. Just say, Lord, speak to me today. I'm tired of searching and not finding. I'm tired of religion. tired of having the same results show me how to do different things but above all Lord we yell for you to speak into our hearts this morning Lord we know that we're at a critical moment in history a critical moment in eternity right now Lord my prayer is for every person here and watching by live stream that would be like the sons of Ishika that we'd have a discernment to align ourselves with the times and seasons and the day that we're in Lord you said not to concern ourselves with tomorrow because tomorrow may never come. But what are you telling us today? We only have enough bread and manna for today. There's only enough faith for today. 
can't have enough faith for tomorrow. You have enough faith for today. Lord, we heal to you right now, Holy Spirit. I lift up these prayer requests. Kayleen's nan in hospital. Olivia, Margaret's daughter-in-law down in Perth. And one of the inmates, Retro, brought in. Lord, you know every name, cancers, uterus issues, pregnancies. Father, we thank you right now. And we just speak life. Even Sunette lifted up somebody to us earlier. We pray over every circumstance, every situation. We pray over bitterness in people's hearts that they release it, Father. They're standing stage four cancer. They need to let go. Help them let go, Father. I pray over every one of these prayer requests in my hand right now. And I just pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, for supernatural healing to flow. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Thank you, team. Why don't you look to somebody and say, welcome to church. You'll look beautiful. You'll look good. Just excuse the darkness there. I'm preaching about coming out of darkness into light. <laughs> we have uh, part of our insurance claim. We've um, I had to get them because I figured out that water was dripping in the carpet. But eventually, when I came in the other one day, I realized it's dripping through a light. A and I'm not an electrician, but I'm just like electricity and water. Are like, mm, what's the odds of it going well? And so I called the builder in, the insurance builder. They're still trying to sort the roof out. Um, and uh, I just asked him to come and sort it out. He drilled an inspection hole and uh, showed me the light didn't pack up because of age. It packed up because there was water on it. And my suspicion was correct. Water and electrics don't work well together. And so they uh, made it safe, but the electrician didn't realize um, that it's all looped. <laughs> Except for the one there. I think that's the faith corner. Who's sitting in the back? There's a faith corner happening there. If you guys need the gift of faith, it's in the back right hand side of the church. That light's working, but none of the others are working. So anyway, it's the joys of pastoring and walking by faith and running an organization and dealing with people. <laughs> I won't specify or generalize, okay? But uh, I, I, I'm, who's ready for the word this morning? Amen. You know, ch church attendance does not make you a, a follower of Jesus. Following Jesus wholeheartedly does. Can, can I say that again? Church attendance alone does not make you a follower of Jesus. Following Jesus wholeheartedly does. Let me tell you, I, I can assure you, the devil comes to church sometimes. He does. He does. He, he comes to church. But my question to you is, are, are you walking with Jesus or merely passing by him? That's the crossroad. Every single person has a crossroad in their walk and encounter and their, their journey with Jesus. And, and my question is, have you just crossed paths for a moment in time? Or have you actually made a decision that I'm, I'm following him wholeheartedly? Because there's a difference. Uh, if you've walked around or been around, uh, around long enough, you'll realize that it's easy to quit. It's easy to turn, your, your, turn from your faith. It's easy to turn your back on the Lord. Listen, I've had multiple whinges and said, Lord, you can have it. Take it. Do what you want with it. And then there's silence for a long moment after that until I come back and go, look, can I just talk about that moment we just had? And then he says, I'm here listening. But, but we all have that experience, right? And um, last weekend, what, what an awesome message. Who, who were blessed last weekend with Pastor Tony? Hey, look, he looks good, like all in white. It's like he climbed off his super yacht this morning, came to deliver, and he's climbing back on his super yacht. Like, I wanted, to wear, I wanted to wear white pants this morning, but I just didn't have the confidence. But I'm like, man, between him and Tim, I mean, they make white look good, right? I don't know how you guys, you guys make white look good, right? I think I'm going to wear my wife. I'm going to pull them out, man. I'm going to pray over them. I'm going to be like a Benny Hinn. 
You're going to see the healing anointing come on me when I put those white pants on. I kid you not. Demons are going to scatter. People are going to get healed. Like if I put the white on and then throw a bass guitar in my hand, if the demons don't come out by prayer, I'm going to hit people. <laughs> but I was, I, was, I, was listening. I was in Sydney last week and I was at the airport and uh, I, I had a moment to, um, I was having breakfast at the one lounge and I decided to put, put on uh, the church service and was watching the church service and listened to Pastor Tony preach. What a great message, right? Uh, qualifications of a believer. <laughs> you mean there's qualifications? More than just driving through, doing the prayer and carrying on with life. A little bit more than that, I think, right? And uh, I was really compelled and blessed. And I started thinking about it. And when he was talking about this transformation, it, 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 it's... Um, more than just confessing Jesus, but there's a lifestyle that comes with it. And I started thinking about my message today. And, and on the plane, as I do, I love being in the plane. What else do you do when you're in the mercy of mechanics and some pilot you didn't really interview and going, are you emotionally stable today? Are we flying near buildings? Are you okay? We just climb in the plane, buckle our seatbelt, and take off, Right? But we, we struggle to trust Jesus. <laughs> but, but you don't know if he, he's just angry at his wife and decides, like, I'm just, I'm just, <clears throat> right? Yeah, I remember being in Singapore on the runway once and, and with the humidity, I didn't realize at the time, but the air, airplane inside, it was just releasing mist and condensation. And my wife was lying on my shoulder sleeping. I'm like, dear Jesus, do I tell her or do I just let her go in peace? <laughs> So I'm like, we're taking off, and it's like, oh, shaka da ba 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 ra ba ba ba. Eventually, it, it, it went away. But but we trust we trust man, we trust people, but we 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 struggle to trust Jesus, the one that we said come into our life, save us. We want eternity with you. I don't get it, right? And and it's something we all have to go through and deal with. But I want to I want to read you a, a quick story before I get into my message. Um. In the early 1900s, there was a successful businessman, uh, businessman named Alfred Nobel. There is a well-known story about the origin of Nobel Prize, although historians have been un unable to verify it uh, and dismiss some of the story as a myth. In, 19, uh, sorry, in 1888, the death of his brother supposedly caused several newspapers to publish uh, obituaries of Alfred in error. One French newspaper uh, condemned him for his invention of military explosives. Uh, in many versions of the story, dynamite is quoted, although was mainly used for civil applications. And this is said to have brought about the, his decision to leave a better legacy after his death. The obituary stated, Le merchant de la morte est mort. Can you help me with that, brother? Yeah, no, I'll help you. I was just checking to see that you're genuinely French, right? <laughs> the merchant of death is dead. <laughs> and went on to say, Dr. Alfred Nobel, who became rich in finding ways to kill more people faster than ever before died yesterday. So here's a guy reading a newspaper that's written after him, falsely accusing him, and he's alive, and they're saying he's dead. But this is what it did to him. He said this, that Nobel read... And was appalled at the idea that he would be remembered in this way. His decision to donate the majority of his wealth to be found uh, or to found the Nobel Prize has been accredited to him wanting to leave behind a better legacy. And I was thinking as I'm reading that and thinking how many of us as believers, we get saved, but then what? What, what is your impact after that, what, what, is your, what is your journey with Jesus look like after that? What is the legacy you're going to leave after that? You know, there's a, there's a good old saying that you move from success to significance. You can be successful in your business, in your marriage, in life, but are you significant? That's the question. And he was obviously a successful businessman, but felt, you know what? I'm not significant. And if that's how people look at me, that I was selfish, destructive, I, I, I created wealth out of greed and, and for myself, that's not how I want to be remembered. And I want to talk to you this morning about how do you want to be remembered. 
And I want to talk to you a little bit about your crossroad. Are you following Jesus or merely passing by? That's the question I want to ask. Because if we're truly following Jesus, we will make an impact. Because he wants to work through us. And if we heal to him and what he wants for us, we will live a life of significance. Now that may look different to every single person by the sound of my voice and by live stream. But let me assure you, you will have significance in one way, shape or form or another. Whether it's to that one person you said one thing that changed the trajectory of their life and put them on a, on a catapult into destiny and purpose, into great things. Maybe that one thing you say and do by the unction of the Holy Spirit helps a marriage. Maybe it saves somebody from committing suicide, whatever it is. That to me is significance. Significance does not always have to be a platform and I don't understand why people want this position. If they understood it, they would run from it. Trust me, there's a, there's a chain that you can't see that's on my ankle. But most people look at ministry and all great things. They look at it as like all oh, the limelight, that 45 minutes or this was a, a, listen, you get the same endorphin rush from being addicted to substance. Some people are just as spiritually addicted to a high of a moment. But it takes more than that to follow Jesus. Let me tell you that. It, it, it takes, how do I follow him when I don't have the high, when I'm in the low? Have I made a decision to truly follow him? And I want to read a story about the rich young ruler that Jesus challenged. And I pray that it challenges us all. You know what? Probably more now than ever. If we had six hours before it's all over, well, how are we going to live the next six hours? If we have six years, how are we going to live the next six years? If we have 60 years, how are we going to live the next 60 years? It's irrelevant on the time frame. But the question is, how are we going to follow Jesus? Wholeheartedly or half-heartedly? Because that's the question. And so in Matthew chapter 19, verse 16, he says this. Now behold, this is just after Jesus, the disciples in all their... Uh, scheduling and all their religiosity stopped the little children coming to Jesus and said, no, 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 no children are allowed. No, no youth allowed jumping in the front row. We, we're going to mess with this service. We're going to, what are we going to look like? Bunch of clowns? Let them come. But what about the little children running around making a noise while, they, while the worship team, let them come. Jesus said, let them come. And immediately after he dismissed that moment, this is what happens. Now behold, one came to him and said, good teacher, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? So he said to him, why do you call me good? No one is good but one that is God. But if you want to enter into, the, into life, keep the commandments. He said to him, which ones? Jesus said to him, you shall not murder. It's like, okay, let's start there, right? Don't murder anyone, right? Uh, don't commit adultery, uh, don't steal, do not bear false witness, everyone says amen to that. Uh, just a newsflash, gossip, when you're talking about somebody and they're not there, is false witness. Anyway, let's move on, another sermon, all right? Honor your father and mother, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. You know, they, the, the ladies are doing worthy. How can you love God if you can't love yourself? It says, love the Lord your God as yourself. That with the, if you're a lady, I want to encourage you, bring friends, bring teenagers, bring people. Because if you don't know how to love yourself, you, l listen, you, you, you're going to open yourself up for people to misuse you, mistreat you. Our young ladies need to learn, and we need to be teaching the next generation how, how to conduct yourself, how to dress. That you don't have to dress like the world dresses, you can dress like a lady still. Come on, you got to be, if you've got daughters, young daughters, teenagers, teach them that they don't need to be dressing like skanks. Sorry, that came out of my mouth. It's true. I don't understand it. There's, there's people that call themselves believers and they walk around with hot cross buns. Hot cross bun. On the beach. I, I don't know, I don't know how you get that right. Sorry, can we go there for a moment? If we call ourselves believers, sanctified, dignified, holy unto him, and to try to raise a standard, how are we allowing our children to buy costumes that cost more for less? Swimmers. 
I don't get it. Why you want to pay more? Buy a full one. It's cheaper. <laughs> Seriously? It's ridiculous. Now, who was it? Who distracted me? I'm trying to preach a message. Stop it. Love your neighbor, Love your neighbor and yourself. The young man said to him, all these things I have kept from my youth, what do I still lack? What do I still lack? Good question to ask. Lord, what else is there in my life? What else are you stirring me? What else are you challenging me right now in my life? Is there more that I can do? Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect, <laughs> go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. And all the missions people say, yes. But that's not what he's saying. And I'm going to get there. But he said, follow me. Okay. He says, again, I say to you, it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, with men... This is impossible, but with God, all things are possible. Ever say, with God, all things are possible. Then Peter answered and said to him, uh, See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? So Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the regeneration when the Son of Man sits on the throne of His glory, you who have followed me will also sit on the twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and everyone who has left houses, brothers and sisters, or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be lost and the last first. Amen. Now I'm going to clarify some things there so that we don't do stupid things. I had a guy sit in front of me once and say that the Lord told him, to leave his family, leave his wife, leave his kids and follow him. And I said, are you providing for them? No, God told me because he would not tell Isaac or Abraham to do it if he wouldn't expect us. And I had to say, you're a fool. <laughs> Just like that. And the second question I asked, I said to him, have you read Genesis to Revelation? He said, no. I said, I knew the answer. I'm just checking that you know the answer. Because you clearly don't know your Bible, nor your God, nor the covenant. Timothy is clear in the book of Timothy. Anybody wanting to pursue ministry, check the order of the house. Is he faithful to one wife? Is he a provider of the family? If it's no, you disqualify from ministry. Can I preach a little bit this morning? You, you disqualify yourself from ministry. So if I'm not leading good example and, and got my household in order, you cannot look after the household of God. You're disqualified. There's another one that says, don't give yourself to strong drink or wine. Okay? There are requirements for people that are called to ministry, and we're in a society today that they've suited it to, for themselves because of the culture we live in. I'm yet to proclaim a kingdom culture, not the world's culture. Not out of condemnation and guilt, but out of love and expectation and of honor. Because if we do things the kingdom's way, we get kingdom results. But he said this, that the last shall be first. Let me say this to you. The kingdom's way, the kingdom's pecking order, the kingdom's uh, stacking order, or ranking order, if you like, is different to the world system. It's completely different. Amen? The, the world is measured by wealth. How much wealth you have determines your status. What name you have? Do you have a name? Do you have a royal family? Let me just say something to you. I respect what the royal family do, and that's all great. But let me tell you that. If you're born again, sanctified, set aside, had the blood of Jesus, you are a royal priesthood in a holy nation. And if any one of the royal family have denounced or denied Christ, you stand on a higher authority in the spirit realm and a higher royalty than even they do. Kingdom of God is completely different to the world system, right? I'm an MP. Great. Do you know Jesus? Because then I don't really care. I respect and honor. The Bible tells us to honor all in authority. But let me tell you what. If you're born again, washed again, and you're an MP, and you're a politician, and you're our mayor of the Gold Coast, well, then you have the hand of God and the kingdom of God upon your life, and you're sanctified, you're a holy priesthood, a holy nation, and you have influence into the world. Okay? 
Outside of that, you don't. So the world looks at it, your status, your name, who you know. I didn't know enough people. Listen, all you need to know is the Holy Spirit and Jesus and know that they work all things together for the good of those who love you. Amen? What degrees you have. I'm all for study. I love educating. I, I love that. But if you, if you think that, that the amount of degrees you have on the wall uh, it defines you, you're wrong because there's only a degree of information. You only have to have 80% pass rate to be a surgeon. I don't want that surgeon. Because I don't want the 20% to come across his path that he never passed and go, I knew this was in there somewhere, but I didn't quite get it right. I don't want that degree working on me. A degree is only a degree of information. So it means nothing to have a degree. Amen? It's experience, revelation. We live in a, in a society as doggy dog. Okay, I've got to fight my way up the corporate ladder. We, we're in a culture that's tall poppy seed syndrome. People don't like people excelling. People are intimidated because of their own lack of self-worth. And they go, oh, I, I don't want to see that person excel because I can't. I can't see myself doing it. So I don't want anyone else because they actually show me up. They, they, they actually get in my face and challenge myself. I have to deal with myself when I see somebody else prospering, succeeding, excelling in life. I actually have to get real with myself. And I don't like that, that person. I don't like that marriage. I don't like that business. I don't like that. Because I actually have to start dealing with myself. And that's what you're saying. The kingdom of God works completely different to the way the world does. What did he say? The last will be first. And that doesn't mean we don't have to excel. It doesn't mean we don't have to uh, achieve things. I'm all for excelling because God said, be fruitful, multiply, and subdue. That right in the beginning is God's mandate, that we increase, we subdue. We don't stay stagnant, right? But it's the heart condition behind it. And God says, if the heart condition is from a place of humility, promotion comes, increase comes, advancement comes every single time. Amen? See, the world says, fill me up till I'm full. God says, empty out to make room. I'm going to say it again. The world says, fill me up till I'm full of things, stuff, uh, achievements, success, validation from everyone else. And Jesus says, empty yourself so you can fill me with me. Amen. In, in verse 16, he, he's talking, the young ruler is seeking. He's open. He's curious. He's saying, teacher, like, what do I do? What, what do I do? What am I lacking? What am I I'm missing? I, and Jesus challenges him and says, hey, you've done all these things. He, he said, I, I, I know the commandments. I've kept the commandments. I haven't stolen. I haven't committed adultery. He even says that I, I did it from a youth, which tells me that his environment was good. He was raised in a good household. He was raised in a, where they would go to synagogue. They would go to the temple. The, the, they would be teaching around the word. He says, I've been raised up as a child. Come on, parents, train your child up in the way they should go. That if they depart, they shall return. Right? We need to be training our children or the world is going to be training our children. You know, Megan says to me, like, Ezekiel's got such good manners. He says, you're welcome. Two and a half, he says, you're welcome when you say thank you. Because I was raised from a Dutch background, you open the car door for ladies, you respect elders, you say yes and thank you. I promise you, walking on the path the other day, I move out the way so somebody can walk past with a pram and they don't even say thank you. But I said it's a pleasure, just in case I didn't hear. Like, it's a pleasure. Like, can I carry it for you? As, like, like wh wh where's manners gone? You know, you, you stop at a, at, a, at, a, at a crossing, a pedestrian crossing, and you get this like, like I'll just put, I'll just, I, I feel my, my, I'm itching to go. You better get off that white crossing very quickly. <laughs> right? No, I'm just kidding. Right? But, but where's the like courtesy of like, hey, thank you. Like, yeah, I know that's there for me. You didn't have to stop, but there's this entitlement mentality that, I don't have to because I'm entitled. Listen, we got to help our you. We got to help the next generation get out of entitlement mentality. The only thing you're entitled to is to breathe. After that, everything else is a bonus. Right? Maybe I was raised in a different generation, but I used to open the fridge hoping there's food in the fridge. Right? 
now my boy at two and a half is trying to tell me what food he wants. Like I'm making French toast. No, scrambled eggs and toast. Okay. Sure. Would you like one or two eggs? <laughs> We've got a coach. But he is open and curious. He is asking the right questions and Jesus challenges him and says, you still lack one thing. That's to follow me. And Jesus challenges him and says, follow me. He, he, he says to him, sell everything that you have and follow me. Now, let me just say this. That doesn't mean Jesus doesn't want prosperity. There's more covenant about prosperity, increase in finances in the Bible than actually talks about salvation. And every time there was an encounter with God that somebody co truly connected covenant there was financial increase and blessing. There was outworking of God's hand showing up in good things. So that's not what Jesus was talking about here. Jesus was talking about, he knew the state of the guy's heart and said, there's one thing you lack. You go to church, tick. You've read your Bible, tick. You've done the declarations, tick. You're a good person. You're, you're even a good, good husband, good, good wife. You, you, you do all those things, tick. But you haven't truly followed me with all your heart. And my test to prove that is let go of that and that will be your test. If you can let go of that, then I'll know you truly follow me. But if you can't let go of that, then I know that you have not truly followed me. And what did it say? The guy walks away feeling sorrowful. The issue was not that he had great possessions. The issue was that the possessions had him. The issue is not God wanting to raise you up into a, a dynamic ministry. The, the issue is, does the ministry have you? The issue is not that God want, doesn't want to bless your business. The issue is, does the business have you? The issue is God doesn't not want to give you a million dollars, five million dollars, ten million dollars. But the issue is this, does the million dollars have you? This guy, his things, his possessions had him. And he never had Jesus in his heart. He, he had all the rules. He had all the law. He knew the stuff. And he, he actually created a good culture, a good shared value system in his household. I have good values that I've, I've, I've learned from the Bible and I live them and that's a great thing. But, but Jesus said, but you still haven't followed me. You still don't know what it means to completely pick up your cross and follow me. That doesn't mean giving away everything. That just means letting go of everything in your heart and trusting Jesus. See, the cares of the world had him hostage. Worldly thinking, worldly system, dependence on material status. Dependent. Listen, if you're one of those people that feel like oh, my safety is based on what's in my bank account, you don't know Jehovah Jireh. I'm going to say this in love, not under condemnation or guilt. If you can't tithe just 10%, you don't truly know him as Jehovah Jireh, your provider. And that's, 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 that's bare minimum. I believe we're in a new covenant where God says, be led by me for giving. And sometimes there's more, sometimes there's less. But be led by me. You heard Amy's testimony a few weeks ago. Being led by the Lord. What happened? <laughs> a mortgage debt free. Come on. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. So when we get into a place of being spirit led with our material things, with our status, with our life, that's where we're truly following him. We don't have to give it up. But we have to ask the question, are we following him or are we merely passing by? Are, are we merely attending church? Are we following him? Am I merely reading my devotion in the morning or am I following my devotion in the morning? There's a big difference. Listen, I, I, I know you, you can have your declarations in your fridge and while you're making breakfast, you confess it, declare it. That's wonderful. But has it got in your heart and has it become a part of your life and do you follow after the things that's stirring in your spirit? Amen? Come on, don't look so morbid and sad. This is a good message. It's a challenging message, especially in the day we're in. See, the disciples said to Jesus, we left all and followed you. 
did the disciples give up their businesses? No, they never. Because after they they were still fishing. But what they were willing to do at a heartbeat to go, I'm putting this on hold for a moment. I'm going to follow you and go with you. What do you want for this? See, their businesses became a vehicle and an assignment. Because Jesus showed up later and said, cast your nets on the other side. They had the biggest harvest ever. Oh, listen, that's a message right there. Can we stop there? The, the thing that you're willing to give up will potentially be the biggest harvest God will bring back to you. If you're willing to give up, I'm chasing for the perfect girl, the perfect guy, and go, Lord, I'm going to follow after you what you have. He will give you the good measure, pressed down, shaken together, marriage, if you would trust him. If you're chasing after your own ideas, but go, Lord, I'm putting every idea, every plan I have on the table to follow after you, follow after your unctioning, follow after your prompting, and God will give it back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and it will prosper, because my Bible says what my hands touch must prosper. The disciples didn't walk away from their businesses. There was a moment Jesus said, follow me, I'll make you fishers of men. Their assignment, their task was to catch fish. But their purpose was to catch men and women. Can you see that? Their their purpose was to become fishers of men, evangelists, harvesters. But their business, their task, their, their providence was in what they did every day. And often people get stirred up and encouraged to, to do stuff God's calling them and forget That you can have one hand doing something that feeds your family, that's practical, but the other hand you're going, Lord, what do you want me to do with it? What do you want me to do with the finances? What do you want me to do with partnerships? Do you want me to bless those people, bring them on? Do you want me to fund that thing? Do you want me to do this thing? What do you want me to do with it? Because it's yours, it's not mine. Amen? You can have vision. I go through it all the time. I check in with the Lord. Lord, how are we going with the vision of the church? This is your church. If there's anything we need to adjust, speak to me. Because it's your church, not my church. It's not my vision. It's your vision. I'd rather want his vision. Because then he's responsible for the provision. If it's my vision, I'm responsible for provision. And I don't want that. Amen? But the disciples said, I will follow you. And he, and he spoke to them. To follow means doing God's way. But this was the thing. What did he say to the disciples? Those after the regeneration, those of you that followed me, will also sit on the throne and judge. Listen to this. Those that follow Jesus wholeheartedly, God opens door that you have access to places others can't go in the spirit realm. There is an authority you step into. People say it's a believer's authority. No, it's a follower's authority. Because if I'm not a follower, I usurp the authority for my own gain. And heaven is not obligated to back it. But to followers of Jesus, there's an authority attached because we become ambassadors and we take and download the assignment he has for us and I can act out of that authority that heaven will back up. So when I become a true follower of Jesus, Guess what happens? I get access into places that most can't go. I get authority issued to me that others don't have, right? And I move into a place that has benefits that others don't receive. That's what he said to the disciples. You have access, you have authority, and you'll have benefits because you follow me. I don't know about you. I want to be a follower of Jesus. I need access into some place in the supernatural realm that the things of this world cannot give me, cannot produce, cannot open up. I need access to some things. I need authority that comes from heaven because my authority, demons will look, people will look. But when I walk in an authority from heaven, demons will flee, doors will open, providence will come, blessings will show up. Amen? I don't know about you, but I need that. Look at this in the, in the Passion Translation. And let me just say this, I love the Passion Translation, it helps clarify, but I wouldn't study out the Passion Translation as a rule, right? It's like having a quote, and somebody just puts their opinion in the quote, but it's like the Message Bible, it just opens up and tra- uh, paraphrases things. I like New King James, I like stuff that's, that's rooted deep in translation, but I want to show you something from it, because it, it opens up and gives you a good understanding of truth. It says in Matthew chapter 19, verse 29, For anyone who has left behind their home and property, leaving family, brothers and sisters, mothers or fathers or children for my sake, they will be repaid 
a hundred times over and will inherit eternal life. But many will, who push themselves to be first, listen to this. This is the part I want you to hear. Many who push themselves to be first will find themselves lost. And those who are willing to be lost will find themselves to be first. I remember Pastor Megan and myself, we've often gone through life and we've always, often, often been in a place where it seemed like everyone else was excelling. Everyone else was going there, but we decided to do things God's way. Every single time, in business, in, finance, in ministry, everything, even in our, our relationship. It seems like everyone's getting engaged, everyone's getting married, everyone's doing it, we'll do it God's way. But by doing it God's way, by being lost every single time, he just goes, accelerates, and you end up in a place better off than you thought you would have been. Amen? I've seen it, I've experienced it, I've tasted it, I've, I know this is truth for my own life. See, the issue here is not abandonment, and I want to make this clear. This statement is not saying abandon your family or your wife or responsibilities because that would be contrary to the word. The Bible is clear. It says, husbands, lay your life down. Otherwise, when you get married, you've actually died to yourself and it's no longer you're living for yourself. You're living for your wife and your family. That's what the Bible tells me. And it says, wives, no longer is it about your needs, but you submit yourself and you dare to serve the needs of your husband. And when we both come together like that, there's a wholeness and a fullness that happens. So it's not talking about abandoning that position, okay, or responsibility. It's, it's not talking about abandoning your responsibility to steward your business properly or your finances properly. That's not what it's talking about. It's talking about the issue here is about your comfort and dependence on those things over the comfort and dependence on what the Word of God tells you, the final authority. That's what it's telling you. So it's not talking about leaving all that. It's going, I'm not dependent on my wife to make me happy. I'm dependent on Christ to make me happy. I'm not dependent on my status in my, my life, my financial status. I'm dependent on the status Christ gives me because he says, I will meet every one of your needs. Give and it shall be given back. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Amen. Jehovah Jireh, he's my provider. I'm no longer dependent on my own abilities. I'm a good steward and I'm faithful to do what I'm meant to do. But listen, it's not by might, not by power, not by my spirit, but by His spirit, says the Lord. So I move from a place of, I'm not abandoning, but where do I get my resource from? Where do I rest on? Where do I get my comfort from? Where do I get my stability from? Where do I get my security from? People think that if I get married, I'm going to feel complete. Listen, if you go into marriage or, or relationships half, it's still going to be half. Amen? When I'm full, I bring my half in totality and full. When the other person's full, they bring their totality and full. And now the marriage is full. But we're all leaking vessels. And unless we fill ourselves up first... We take away from our relationships and our marriages. I can't fix my wife. And trust me, she can't fix me. But I've, she's had to learn to pray for me. And I've had to learn to go to the Word and trust the Holy Spirit. Amen? It's very important that we understand this. So my question is, am I after comfort or am I after picking up my cross? That's the, that's the question Jesus answered. Because we can be comfortable in church attendance. We can be comfortable in general. But am I willing to go, Lord, this is a dangerous prayer. When you go, not my will, but your will be done. The moment you pray that prayer, he says, are you, are you did the angels, did you hear that? Like, can we just validate, are you sure that's what you want? Yes, my business is your business. Are you sure that's what you want? Because it's going to cost you. It's going to cost you obedience. It's going to cost you faith. But listen, you will have access where nobody else has access. You'll have benefits that nobody else has. And you'll have an authority that nobody else walks in if you're willing to do that. You know, everyone talks about the end time wealth transfer. Listen, that's not for everybody. It's for those that are faithful with the little can be faithful with the much. It's for those that, you know, people go, I'm trusting for a million dollars. Well, how are you managing $100,000? How are you managing $10,000? Because 
Because if you can't manage $10,000, you ain't managing a million dollars. So let's just incrementally build up stamina to get to where we want to go. But I know God is able to accelerate and speed things up if we're faithful with the little. Amen? Are we, are we choosing the path of least resistance or are we choosing the faith road? Because the path of least resistance, let me tell you something, is comfortable. You'll be saved. You go to heaven. But what does it really mean to follow? To truly follow when he said to the disciples, leave your business, leave your nets and follow me. Their heart response was different to the rich man. When Jesus said the same thing to the rich man, he says, I can't. I'm sorry. That, that's a boundary. I, 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 go, I go to the temple. Hey, I'll, I'll go to Faith Legacy Believers Church. I'll even go to the ladies' girls' night in. I'll, I'll do that. I'll even, I'll even pay for one person's ticket. I, I'll, I'll do that. But now you're pushing your luck, Jesus. Like now you're pushing your luck. To, to ask me to leave that, to do that, uh, to, to empty my bank account, to, 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 don't do stupid things. You have, to be hurt. you have to hear from the Lord. That's not what I'm saying. But if God instructs you something, will you obey? I know too many people, I know a few millionaires that have shared stories with me, personal stories, where, where they have said, supernaturally, $100,000 came in or $50,000, and God said, that's seed, not bread. And they, they're really wanting to do this or need that, and they're going, okay, it's seed. And I'm going, like, I, I commend you. I take my hat off to you. That you can be listening enough to go, I'm following you in my finances. I'm following you in my business. I'm following you in my ministry. Oh, don't, don't get up and pray for Israel. The worship team is in the middle of a song. Listen, I'm following Jesus, not the worship team. And if he's saying pray for Israel now, we're stopping, we're praying for Israel now. Is that okay? Like, like, like what, about, what about the new people that come in? They're going to think you are disorganized. Uh, I'd rather be moved by the Spirit and led by the Spirit in a day of chaos uh, than not. Right? So if structure, if, if I mess with structure, I'm sorry. <laughs> can, can I ask just the first image? Can I ask you just for one image there? Not a big picture, but it's, it, it'll do the job. That's what you call the eye of the needle. In verse 24, he said, Again, I say to you that it's easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. What is he talking about here, and why is he saying that? Good question. I'm so glad you asked that question, so I'll answer it for you. That's the gateway into, into Jerusalem. And the eye of a needle, instead of opening it all up, was just an access point for safety, for, for access, whatever. And so what it was talking about there is that it's saying that it's easier for a rich man, okay, or for a camel to enter through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter heaven. What was he saying? He was saying this. It's not impossible for camels to go through there. They actually went through there all the time. But the thing was this, that when they got there, they had to offload everything they were carrying. They had to take everything off that they were carrying and put it down and carry it through separately so the camel could get through. And so what he's saying is, the reason the rich man is harder for them to enter heaven is because the rich man is carrying his wealth as a priority, his status as a priority, his status in life as a priority. Some of us are carrying what people think about more of us as a priority. Uh, we, we're carrying burdens, worries, offenses from the past, bitterness, root, uh, bitter judgment in our hearts. We're carrying all these things with us. And Jesus is saying, if you want to be a follower, there's some things you have to offload off your life so that you can gain access and go through to the other side. Amen? That's what he was saying. And so he's not saying that rich people can't get to heaven. He's just saying, where is your heart situated at? As believers, as people right now in today where we are, what is your priority? You know, let me just say this. Just because you're tired, that doesn't mean that your heart is fully following Jesus. You can just be doing works. And that's a good work. Don't stop. But let me tell you this. It goes far more than just dropping a tithe in a bucket. It means, Lord, I get on my knees and I ask you, every area of my life, is there changes I need to make? 
Do I need to do something different with my business? Do I need to do something different with my ministry? Do I need to do something different in my marriage? What do you want from me? Is there anything you want to do for me through me today? Do you, what would you like to do through me today? How would you like to use me today? What would you like to speak through me today? Who would you like me to pray for today? That's what he's talking about. And so every day when I, when I go through life, I, I got to see myself as a camel carrying load. And, and the, the stack, it keeps getting stacked up. That person offended me. That person upset me. That person said that. Suck it up. Get over yourself. Jesus went to a cross. He got beaten. He got whipped. He was barely recognizable. He carried a cross for you. Get over who upset you, who offended you, who said something about you. Amen? Listen, if you haven't been whipped, beaten brut brutally beyond recognition, who are we to walk around with offenses and strife in our heart? Amen? Seriously, church, I want to encourage you. And I feel like this, just listening to the news last night and going, man, this is more significant than I realized at this time. He, he's not saying don't have a dream for your life. What he's saying is if you follow him, he'll put the dream for your life in you and fulfill it. Amen? There's two categories of people, right? Those people who heard but didn't follow. Just think about it for a moment. The scribes and Pharisees, they were challenged and then got offended. I know, you speak to any pastor, they'll tell you how many people have been offended and left because they challenged them. The job of a shepherd is to encourage, inspire, but also challenge. Because the Bible says that make it easy for them, and I'm paraphrasing, because they give an account for your soul. That's why church attendance is not about attending church. It's about accountability for your soul is on the other stake of it. I, I, that's why I take what I do seriously. Because Pastor Tony, Charles, my wife, they're not going to stand before God one day for, for this church. I'm standing there and he's going, what did you do with them? Why was that not dealt with? Why didn't you say that? Why didn't you encourage that? Why didn't you speak that? I'm going to stand there. And I take that seriously. But they got offended. The second lot of people with the crowds that witnessed Jesus, their miracles, heard the teachings. These are the people that go to miracles, crusades. They, they run off to every prophetic word, every prophetic ministry, every evangelistic thing. But their lives don't change. They see the miracles happening, but there's no regeneration and transformation. How is that possible if you're not following Jesus, but you're following man? Jimmy said it the best way. Jimmy and Gino, my friend. He's a little bit shorter than me and a little bit more tan than me. Any of those of you that know him, he's my good friend from Africa. Um, Jimmy has about four closing sessions. He's Jenny in Pentecostal. He says, I'm just closing. And it's like two hours later. <laughs> but Jimmy, Jimmy said this. He said, don't follow the crowd, follow the cloud. And I think we're in a day where we need to be aware of that. Are we following crowds or are we following the cloud? I want to be following the cloud. I don't know about you. The, the, the next lot was Judas. He walked with Jesus and then betrayed him because things got in his heart. He, he was following Jesus, but there, there was a day that something came that he had not dealt with an issue. Listen to me. He had not dealt with an issue. He left an issue undealt with. And the enemy found a loophole going, if I just go through that door, that gateway, I'll pull him out. I've got him. And Jesus never chased him. But Judas, but I'm here to encourage you. There are people who heard and followed. Peter left his fishing business to follow Jesus and say, I'll do whatever you want to do through me. I'll follow you. Mary and Martha, they invited him into their home. Is Jesus in your home? Are we, are we, are we teaching, our, are training our children? Are, are we tra training our youth? Are, are, we, are, we, are, we, are we bringing Jesus into our marriages or is it only on Sunday? Mary and Martha had him in their home. The Samaritan woman at the well. She didn't just keep quiet. We sing this song earlier. What, what was the words, Lisa? The song that talks about um, that I won't keep quiet. 
That one. You all got it, that one, right? Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. I won't be quiet anymore, right? Yeah, that's the one. Because I have God inside. Thank you for that. All right? The Samaritan woman had an encounter with Jesus. And she had him come in and visit an encounter. And she go, I could not keep quiet about it. Let me ask you this. Have you had an encounter with Jesus? If it's so impactful, are you telling people about it? This is my challenge to you. My challenge to you. I'm challenging every single person here. That between now and the end of the year, you've brought at least three new people into this church. And if they're not close by, it's fine. Get them saved and send them to a church that's close by them. That's fine. But I'm going to challenge you. Every single person. Because if I have him in me and he's made such an impact, how can I be quiet? How can I be quiet? Don't go, don't go give them theology. If you, don't, don't go confuse them. Don't go, don't go scare them. Don't go shangara, 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 shangara. And start shaking and slithering. Don't, don't do that. If that's you, just sip a cup of coffee, calm down. Just tell them about Jesus. That he's actually pretty normal. And he has normal people around. Right? <laughs> I had some guy tell me he went to some crusade. And some lady was trying to prophesy. And this is a minister that went there. And trying to prophesy over him, and he said, Stop. And she was like, But <laughs> she did her thing. And he said, Lady, if you touch me again. <laughs> like sometimes you just 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 be authentic and genuine. Listen, you, you don't have to be mystical. Just how has Jesus touched you? Has he transformed your life? What has he done for you? You know what? The world right now is looking for authentic. Just let's be authentic. I was messed up, broken, and somehow, supernaturally, he touched me. How do you know it was him? Because I was no longer the same as I was before. I didn't have the theology to explain it back then, but I just know there was change. Peace entered in. Just simple. You need to be willing to be empty of all the world has so that you can enter into all the kingdom has. I'm going to read that again. You need to be willing to be empty of all the world has so that you can enter into all the kingdom has. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11 to 13. It says, For I know the thoughts I, I think towards you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you an expected end. And you shall, and, and shall he call me upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you, and you shall seek me and find me when you search with all your heart. With all your heart. The rich man, Jesus, what else do I have to do? I'm attending the church. I've done the Bible studies. I'm doing all this. And Jesus said, great, follow me. Let go of the things that are holding you back. Let go of the, uh, the, the fears, the anxieties, the striving, the offenses, the bitterness, the fear, the worry, the anxiety, your status, what's in your bank account, what's not in your bank account. Let go of all of that and follow me with all your heart. That's what's required to get past that crossroad. And I believe every believer will be at a crossroad at some stage. Maybe you've been there. Maybe you're going to be there. Maybe you're there right now. But I believe it doesn't matter how long you've been serving the Lord. I guarantee you by the sound of my voice, every single person will have that moment where you stand at a crossroad. It might be the first time you, 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 you're encountering Jesus or a message like this. Maybe that's you. Maybe you're at a place where you've gone, man, I've just been so frustrated or, or caught up with all these things. That's you. But we're all there or have been there at some stage of our lives. And the question is, what are you going to do about it? There's three things I want to encourage you with that will help you. Number one, to seek God with all your heart means that your life is no longer yours. You know what? We were dead to trespass and sin before we came to Christ. We were dead and dying going to hell. We were in separation from Him. 
And if we've professed him as Jesus, as Lord and Savior, well then technically, in one way it doesn't change because my life is dead to me. It says that I decrease that he might increase. Right? We live, breathe, move, and have our being in Christ, not in ourselves. Right? The second thing is this. Understand the depth of of this will help you to see God in a new way. Galatians said this, that I've been crucified with Christ. It's no longer I live, but Christ who lives in me. Amen? So he's trying to live in me, and he's trying to live through me. And if, if I can't release that place where I go, Lord, fully, I fully follow you, whatever you want for my life. And let me encourage you. Jeremiah said it. His plans are only good. Doesn't mean we won't go through stuff. But his plans are only good. Amen. And the third thing I want you to understand is that our sole purpose for seeking God is to seek him and be used by him and to serve him. Can I have the worship team come up? I want to, um, you know, can I ask for that, that other image? That is a, a university certificate in South Africa for a student named Bianca, completed her Bachelor of Education this month, this week. This is the testimony. Hi, Sean. Isn't God just so faithful and good and amazing? The odds have been against me, but I'm officially degreed. The audit was done today. God pulled it off, as he always does. I finished the degree during the most challenging and life-shattering season I have ever experienced as a single mother, and am still clean and sober, and God gave us a brand new home in an upmarket area. Oh, and in the same year, I had to appear in court multiple, multiple times for a protection order and divorce. Definitely not me, all my strength, only God. Really, I have nothing to do with this. Looking back, I do not know how physically I got up every day and out one foot in front of the next. It's still challenging and I struggle some days on many levels. But I literally have been, uh, have the things now that I used to pray for. God is so good and I feel so grateful I was a gutter drug addict, but the hand of God can pull anyone out of darkness. No one is hopeless. No one is a hopeless case when Jesus enters the room. I should have died with the life I led, but God. How many more things did he save me from that I will never even know about? So, so, so grateful that Jesus carried me through this storm. It's still raining a little. But God has an umbrella for me. My niece was raised in our household as a baby. My mother raised her. She became more like a sister to me than a, than a, than a niece. And she's been clean now several years, seven years. I think it was this, this year, this week, or a couple months ago. And having two marriages two children from different fathers being on drugs ice everything you can think of being physically abused by drug lords as a single mother listen to me no one under the sound of my voice has an excuse a single mother fending for herself in domestic violence in drug addiction in coming out through all that but seven years ago, she made a decision. She was like the rich man that stood there. And Jesus said, will you follow me? And she said, I don't quite know what that looks like. I don't even know if I like what you will have for me because I have plans. We had this conversation many times. What happens if I don't like what God wants for me? And I gave her the dishwasher story. 
I said, God won't put clothes in a dishwasher. He'll put dishes in there. So whatever he's made you for, he will perfect that. And she made a decision not to murmur, complain, not to be bitter, not to walk around causing strife because she's unhappy, not to break down other people's dreams. She's the most encouraging person and she cheers people on that are doing better than her. But she made a decision. With everything in me, I'm going to follow Jesus. With everything in me, because I've come to the end of my own ways and I've tasted like the prodigal son. I've tasted the pig. Can I say crap in church? Crap. Okay. Taste of the pig crap. I've been there. I've been at the lowest place ever. And I have nowhere to go but forward. And let me tell you something. I sometimes get envious because I think, Lord, I thought I was your favorite. This girl works, works, walks with favor. She's had promotions in schools that she shouldn't have had. She's had favor with owners of pr private schools that she shouldn't have had. She's had favor and in invited into meetings in the education department that she shouldn't have been in. What did I say earlier? The disciples followed. Jesus said, you will be with me in places that have access that other people don't have access. You will have authority that other people don't have authority. And you will have benefits that other people don't see if you follow me with all your heart and soul. Over seven years, clean, not easy. There's been many tears, many phone calls, many text messages. I've been encouraging, counseling, praying for, standing with. But she sends that to me this week and I'm going, Jesus, you are faithful. Jesus, you are faithful. There was a time I, I wanted to go pull her out of a drug house with 15 friends attached to my hip. And God said, don't do that. He said, if you stand and trust me that I will complete what I began in her, I will turn it around. And I made a decision to completely trust as pain, as much pain as I had watching. I came to this word. And I said, Lord, if you did it for me, you'll do it for her. The same power that raised Christ is in her. The hope of glory. You can do it for her. But this is the thing. He can do it, but she made a decision. She made a decision to follow Jesus, not religion, with all her heart. She's serving in the local church of, of the pastor. I, I got to preach at his church uh, in, in COVID via live stream. It was one of Pastor Tony's peers in the ministry. It was Pastor uh, uh, Megan's uh, ch children's church teacher. He had just taken over another church. I said, you need to be in that church, serve that church. I said, I promise you, if you go serve that church, go, watch what God does with you. But get in the house and get planted, get rooted. Don't just attend. She's helping them in their drug addiction rehabilitation program now, now heading it up with the, with, with the other pastor. She, what, what, what was broken ashes, because she said, yes, fo I'll follow you, Jesus, has turned into her ministry. She didn't try to get up to some place. She just said, I'm going to follow Jesus. And I'm excited about the story. And you know what, the same is true for anyone Yeah, By the sound of my voice and by live stream, God can do the same for you. Doesn't matter where your marriage is at. Doesn't matter where your finances are at. Doesn't matter what you've come through. Doesn't matter what you did yesterday, today, or even five minutes ago. It doesn't matter. But what matters is I've made a decision to follow. The rich man couldn't. He couldn't lay it all down at the altar. But the disciples said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will follow Him. Every head bowed, every eye closed. I want to just encourage you right now, if you're in this auditorium, I don't want to take it for granted, but maybe, maybe you're here and you go, I, I, I need to make a decision. I need to get my life right for Jesus. I need to get my life right for Jesus. Can I pray with you? We're going to do communion shortly, but I want to pray for you first. Is there anybody here that says, pray with me? I need Jesus. Everybody here born again. If you died today, tomorrow, next day, and miss all, missed Israel but landed here by accident, yeah, you'd be okay. Can we pray this prayer? Maybe for somebody live stream. Just say, Lord Jesus, forgive me. I never knew any different. But today I do. I believe you died, you shed your blood, and you rose again. All for me. I ask you, to come into my heart 
to be my Lord, to be my Savior. Holy Spirit, help me to follow Jesus all the days of my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you pray that by live stream, can I ask you to go onto our website and just uh, connect with us? Let us know. Somebody will be in contact and just pray with you. I want us to just to partake of communion right now. If you, if you can hand out communion for us, if you guys don't mind. Got such a great team. They reminded me. I had it in my notes, but I forgot. <laughs> Thank you. Now we were getting there. I really, I really felt in this time of communion, the reason I wanted to do it at the end of the service today was based on where we are in the world in the time with Israel. People go, what does it matter about Israel? I'm in Australia. Everything. If you're a believer, everything. That, that, that's, the, that's the ear marker. That's the gauge. That's telling you where we are. That's the timeline. Amen. And I really sensed an urgency in my heart. Last night, I didn't quite know what was going on. I don't usually watch the news. But I was preparing for my message this morning, and I had this quickening in my heart saying, the Lord say, get on the news, go see what's happening. And I went on, and that's when I found out what was going on. I just listened to what the Holy Spirit's telling me, and He'll, he'll let me know. But I sensed that, you know what, based on this message, many of us can get to a place where we, we stop following wholeheartedly. I'm not talking about neglecting the responsibilities and things we need to do. I'm just talking a heart condition to go, Lord, I'm fully yours. My life is fully yours. My business is fully yours. This church is fully yours. It's a good place to start, right? And I just felt like for us to do communion at the end, to really just do a self-evaluation. It's going to be a self-evaluation moment. Just between you and, and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And just check in with him and go, what, what are the areas maybe in my life that, that I haven't quite like the rich man laid down yet? And, and if I'm struggling to, I need you to help me by your might, by your power, by your spirit. Just get real with him. I need you to help me in that area. Amen. Just take a few moments. And in your own time, you partake right now when you're ready. Father, we just thank you right now, Lord. You are worthy of it all. We just heal to you right now. We submit to you, Father. We just thank you, Lord, that you are Jesus. Jesus Christ of Nazareth, our Redeemer, our Savior. You are the Lord of our lives, Lord of this church, Lord of our families, our businesses, every area. It's yours, not ours. Lord, lead us and guide us. In the days, hours, number, I don't know how long we have left on the face of this planet. Months? I don't know. But help us to get to a place, Lord, that we can truly say that we have jumped in with everything in our heart to follow you 100%. Wholeheartedly. Everything. Like the camel taking off all the burdens, all the accessories, all the stuff that we, we, we're hiding under, disguises so that we can enter in to an intimate place, a deeper place, a meaningful place, to have access to a realm that you want to move us to. I pray that for every single person here, in Jesus' name. Church, love you. Appreciate you all. Uh, we're going to ask the team just to close with one more song, and we'd love to connect with you outside. Go grab a coffee. Uh, don't forget prayer meeting Tuesday night. Be praying for Israel. Be praying for Brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the nations, amen, praying for everyone right now more than ever. 
God bless you all. Love you all. See you for coffee and see you next weekend. Worship, hallelujah.